A bit of an introduction here. I've built a race car for the 116 Trophy Series, um, which I've been racing in this year in another car. Um, and this video is sort of associated with an issue I have with my um, car after the build. I'm on a bit of a quest. One of the problems with removing the uh, airbag unit is that you uh, get obviously airbag and seatbelt warnings on the dash. And what I'd like to do is eliminate all the warnings from the dash so that the only time a light comes up is when something goes wrong. Now this may be, I may not achieve this, but um, my plan, um, as far as it's formulated so far, is to simulate the airbag unit using a Raspberry Pi. So I've had this thing for ages. I used it for about 10 minutes, then stuck it on the shelf and haven't used it ever since. Um, it runs Linux, as I'm sure you know, and there is um, a CAN interface, CAN bus interface available for it. So I'm going to have a go at simulating the airbag unit with the Raspberry Pi. Now the first step is I've got to understand the messages that flow between the various control units in the car. So to do that, I'm going to use a software package called Wireshark, which I have quite a lot of experience with looking at some computer networks, but I've never, I've, I've had a bit of a play with USB, but certainly not with CAN bus. So I have this adapter for, um, Wireshark, so you can see that one side has, a, I think they're called 9-pin D-sub or DB9 plugs. So I've got that on one side, and this side is a standard sort of USB-B, is it, the older one, that um, plugs in the side of the computer. And uh, it's compatible with Wireshark. There's a driver for it. There's a, uh, what's it called? Um, EXT PCAP, I think it's called, the additional bit of software you have to have to interface Wireshark to uh, this adapter. And these people who produce the adapter, CoreLan, uh, have full instructions on how to do all this. So, to that end, I brought the, um, the this is the CAN bus that was connected into the um, airbag unit. I brought that out the side of the dash here. I'm only doing this temporarily at the moment. Eventually what I'll probably do is um, I'll put a bracket on and put a proper D-sub connect connector, proper DB9 connector, and uh, do that. But for experimental purposes, I got this off the internet, which is quite easy because I can simply poke the wires in and clamp them down and then I can plug the core LAN unit into the other side of this. So that's the plan. I'll put the links to these parts in the um, description for this video. It's a bit, this is a bit geeky, I must admit, but I like geeky stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to, going to have a go at this to see if I can do it. As I said, I might not achieve it, but we'll have a go. I believe I just need three connections. So I've got can low, can high and ground. Um, so you can see I've just wired those into the um, the socket thing. Uh, it's a standard pin out, I believe. I've checked in various diagrams across the internet and they all seem to show the same uh, pin out uh, configuration. Um, so it's pins two, uh, pin two for can low, pin three for ground and pin seven yeah pin seven for high can high okay so i've connected it up and uh powered on the car oh by the way before we go on when you um if you're going to do this when you're cutting the can bus cable and everything make sure you disconnect the power you isolate uh the the power in the car because even with the without the key in or the ignition on, there are CAN bus signals, and although it probably would survive the occasional short circuit across the uh, CAN bus, uh, I wouldn't advise it. So uh, make sure you power everything off before you uh, start messing around. 
So I've I've done all that. I've connected it all up. I've powered it back on. So now let's uh, see what we get. So uh, first thing I need to do, I have already started ext cap in the past, and it came up with a configuration for um, speed. So I specified a hundred kilohertz, which uh, sorry, hundred kilobits per second, um, because this is the slow ca uh, CAN bus. So it's uh, fire up Wireshark. OK, now, if you've got the drivers installed correctly, you'll see you'll get this one extra interface here, USB CAN, CAN interface. Um, so let's have a go with that. Wow. There you go. It's not very good decode, unfortunately. So all you're getting is raw bytes. Um, but uh, it's definitely getting something. So uh, what I'll do next is I'm going to write some basic decodes for Wireshark. Um, if I do do that and um, I get some decent stuff, I'll share it. Um, I've got a GitHub page somewhere. Um, I can share it on that. What I will do now is let's um, put it onto the, actually press the start stop button. The reason I'm doing this is because um, what you can do is you can, th this trace, this packet capture I'm doing here, I can save it. And then when I come to write the decodes, I'll be able to mess around uh, just decoding the save trace without having to come out here and uh, get more data off the car. Um, so if I stop it, you'll see that if I try and quit out of Wireshark, whoops, it'll say, do you want to save them? So we'll, we'll just do a quick save. Uh, oh, let's just save it onto the desktop. So... Uh, Canvas 001 dot pcap ng save okay so now I can next time I go into Wireshark I'll show you how it how this works uh, if I fire up Wireshark again in fact it will give it as a shortcut there it is on just there and if I do that it just loads up the save trace. Okay, I don't want to try and do a Wireshark course because <laughs> that would be a bit too much for this video. But um, yeah, so the overall plan is uh, to uh, work out how this thing works. What I suspect is that the instrument cluster will keep polling, sending a message to the um, airbag control unit saying, are you there, are you there, are you there? I need to interrupt myself at this point. That's completely wrong. Um, what happens is each unit just fires out basically status messages over and over again. Um, it looks like they're on different timers. Some of them are 200 milliseconds. Some of them seem to be one second timers. There are even some that are 10 seconds. And everybody on the uh, bus listens. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, everybody on all of the buses uh, because they all go through the JBE or the gateway or whatever you want to call it. Um, they'll all listen to it, although I suspect uh, messages, some messages on the um, powertrain can and the F can because they're high speed and high capacity. They must be some of them must be filtered from hitting the K can. Otherwise, they just flood the K can bus. And I don't know how any of that works, but I would assume that must happen. Otherwise, um, you just overload, overload the KCAN. Um, this I didn't explain earlier. This is sitting on the KCAN, so it's on the slow speed body bus um, because that's where the airbag is connected, the airbag unit. Um, yeah, I've, I've learned a bit more since I've recorded this um, this video, which I'll I'll put out a, a further video later. So obviously I've got two, as I see it, I've got two choices. I can figure out the CAN ID codes I need to generate and I'll have to add a little uh, CAN bus top hat thing to this. Uh, which I don't think is too big a deal. 
um, or possibly do it via a dongle thing out of the um, one of the USB ports. But anyway, I believe I can do the hardware. Got to figure out the CAN IDs and the values I've got to uh, generate. Um, and then program it into this and then install it and power it off of the... Um, I've got a USB adapter in the uh, car. I could power it off of the USB adapter. Um, but obviously it's just a Raspberry Pi. It's not ruggedized for car use. It's not... It won't be critical. So if it failed, all that it would mean would be the uh, warning lights would come back on. Or I can put this back in the car. <laughs> so... I was going to just check weight difference. So Raspberry Pi, bearing in mind it's got to have a top hat thing on it, say about 100 grams. This thing, 466. So I'm going to save, let's say 350 grams. Seems an awful lot of effort just to save 350 grams. Um, Perhaps another argument for going the Raspberry, well, there are a couple of other arguments for going with the Raspberry Pi. The first one is that even to put this back in, I'm still going to have to wire in all of the uh, resistors and I want to fuse the resistor, put fuses in the resistors um, because um, if they, if the, if I do hit the barrier, you know, hit the tire barrier or something, it's going to try and inflate the what it thinks are airbags, which means it will just burn through the resistors. So I want it to blow a fuse instead. But there's also the sensor side of the airbag system. I'll have to worry about that as well. Aside from checking that the airbags are actually there and act and and good, there must be sensors that are feeding into this. I can't even remember how that works at the moment. Um. So I've got all that to worry about. The other positive side, positive approach with the um, using the Raspberry Pi is that if I want to generate any other CAN IDs, um, so any other in indications or, or notifications, um, obviously it's just going to be a programming change. There are some dangers, actually. Um, one thing you've got to be careful is that you don't end up generating a can ID that actually has a, a does a right um, action because apparently some of them do. And the one I've read about is the odometer. Um, you have to be careful because if you mistakenly generate a, the can ID for the speed and odometer and you do the right version of it, you can screw up the um odometer on the dash and if it certainly if you did it in a road car it'll appear apparently it appears as though the somebody's been tampering with the uh, mileage so and i don't know what other effects it has um so uh probably don't want to do that not that that's not recoverable i'm sure that you could take it to someone and they'll just flash the um, various control units and fix it but yeah don't want to do any of that so have to do some thorough testing before I plug it actually onto the live CAN network. Um, but at the moment, I'm thinking that it's going to be easier to do it with the with the Pi than it will be to do it with the um, airbag unit, unless I do a full reinstall of the airbag unit. And yeah, um, it's not so much the reinstall of the air. I mean, obviously, if you if you were doing this, you you could choose not to take the airbag unit out in the first place. But um, I am a bit concerned about the complexity and understanding all the um, potential um, triggers for the airbags. So um, I take it it does it on the accelerometer. I'm not sure how it does it, actually. And I don't know if it's triggered down the CAN bus or if there's a direct connection through the wiring. I don't remember there being any connections in the wiring, but I'll need to look it up. Most of these are... Um, like seat occupancy and uh, head height airbags and side airbags and front airbags and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I just I'll just have to consider it. But I'm I'm sort of erring towards the pie, and it'll be an interesting hobby sort of project anyway. 
Um, and it's not as if I'm, this is critical to the operation of the car. If I've got the warning lights on the dash, so be it. But I'd rather not if I could avoid it.